Hey everybody, it's Mo. I'm back again with another video. Today we are at the Magic Kingdom. We're about to board the ferry right now. I don't want to miss it, so we'll see you inside the park. We are here at the Magic Kingdom. It is Fun Friday. What better way to end the week than with a full day at Walt Disney World? I don't know how I'm gonna make it because it is already hot out here. It's about 9, what is it, 9.15? The sun is beaming, you guys, so. We've got a full day ahead of us. We're going to be hanging out here at the Magic Kingdom. We're also going to be making a little side trip over to Epcot later on this afternoon. First thing is that we're just going to kind of walk around the park. We haven't been here for a while, so we're going to see what there is to see. We've got a boarding pass for Tron's Virtual Cube today. It's probably not going to be until a little bit later this afternoon. Well, actually later this morning. So we're super excited about that. So let's get this day started on Friday at Magic Kingdom. Let's go. Might I mention that this is also Find Out Friday. This is what happens when you come out here trying to look cute and it's this hot. Who did I think I was? Me thinking that I'm gonna come out here to the parks with my hair out in 90 degree weather. Find Out Friday. This is the first time that I've been back to Magic Kingdom since they removed all the 50th anniversary decorations and it looks a little, a little naked. It looks a little funny. I'm gonna have to get used to seeing it like this. We decided to head into Liberty Square first to kill some time. We're probably not gonna be called for our group for Tron for a while, so we're just gonna kinda walk around. Right now, Haunted Mansion has the shortest wait time, 15 minutes, so we're gonna head there first. This should pretty much be a walk-on. When ninjas freak in doors chambers, and strange and frightening sound. Your ghost host. <laughs> Our tour begins here in this gallery. Here where you see paintings of some of our guests as they appeared in their corruptible mortal state. <coughs> Kindly step all the way in, please, and make room for everyone. There's no turning back now. Your cadaverous pallor betrays an aura of foreboding, almost as though you sense a disquieting metamorphosis. Is this haunted room actually stretching, or is it your imagination? Mm -hmm. And consider this dismaying observation. This chamber has no windows and no doors. <laughs> which offers you this chilling challenge to find a way out. <laughs> of course, there's always my way. Surely. <laughs> the real chills come later. Now, as they say, look alive and we'll continue our tour. That was fun as always and look what a difference 10 minutes makes the line is already wrapping around in the extended queue so we did the right thing we got on and we're probably not gonna be able to get back on this ride I'm just now realizing how similar the ride technology for Haunted Mansion is to Spaceship Earth over at Epcot I mean it's pretty much the same ride just a different type of uh, ride vehicle so I thought that was pretty cool observation late but cool I think we're going to head over to, what are we going to do, Small World? 
It's a small world? Yeah. Yeah, we're gonna do It's a Small World next. I swear it looks like the lightning lane is longer than the standby. Standby is only 10 minutes, so that's kind of crazy. This was pretty much a walk on and we're in line and about to board way before people who were on the lightning lane. So sometimes the lightning lane isn't worth it. They spent money, but they didn't have an advantage on the standby line. So I find that kind of interesting. Sometimes the lightning lane doesn't pay because we literally walked on to It's a Small World and there are people that are in the line for lightning lane that are still standing in line. And here we are on the ride already. So you guys may want to keep that in mind if you're considering buying lightning lanes for certain rides. Not much has changed on It's a Small World. As you can see, I enjoy a challenge. I took the hair back down, but that's okay. We're gonna see how long we can tolerate this until I have to put it back up. <laughs> what can I say? I like the challenge. We're kind of walking through, making our way through Fantasyland, and then we're heading towards uh, Tomorrowland. I think we're gonna jump on the People Mover. And we normally don't do that until like the very end of the day or when we're super, super tired and we just kind of want to chill, but I think we should do it now. Why not? The standby line for Seven Dwarfs Mine Train is, what is that, 80 minutes right now? Now that I think about it, I don't think we've ridden a uh, mine train this year at all. So that's gonna be for another day, not today. Fun Friday has us in chill mode right now. Are you allowed to have drinks on the people mover? Like, you know, water or any kind of soda or beverage or anything like that? I don't even know. Cause that would have been nice to just kind of sit there and sip on a drink. So I don't know. But anyway, we're headed there now. I'm not gonna lie, this people mover ramp is so awkward. <laughs> finished um, on the people mover we're trying to figure out what we want to do now space mountain is like over an hour wait that's way too long for me <laughs> so i think we're gonna walk over to the what is this the carousel of progress we've never been on that before i have no idea what this is um yeah we're gonna check this out it's close by 
and we've never done it before. So let's see what this is all about. lunch at the Starlight Cafe and we're just waiting for the push notification so that we can go pick up our food from the mobile order line. I got us a nice quiet little seat in the corner away from all the foot traffic in and out of the restaurant but we have a great view of all the park guests where we can kind of people watch and just enjoy the sights while we eat. So here's lunch. We ordered the spicy chicken sandwich with fries. They got the chicken strips, and that's pretty much it. We had a boarding pass for the virtual queue on Tron for the 7 o'clock virtual queue. Well, of course, you never know exactly what time your group will be called, but it's 2.23 in the afternoon, and we still have not been called. Right now, they're on group number 83, 60, 60 something to 83. We're 87, and mind you, we got this boarding pass at 7 a.m. Finally, we are going in to try. Oh my gosh, guys, we are in. We are entering the grid. Team Blue users at all times. Prepare to be digitized into the world of Tron. All right, so we finally rode Tron. Like I said a little earlier in the video, we had a virtual queue boarding pass that I picked up at the seven o'clock virtual queue. Usually you get your boarding pass called by noon a little before noon and that happened with me the last time I rode Tron. Well, that wasn't the case today. We actually didn't get called until well after two o'clock. I wanna say it was close to 2.30. That was pretty disappointing. So that's a whole nother story, but we're gonna talk about that. But anyway, after waiting, we finally got to ride. Now we're pretty much done for the day. We really didn't go through the entire park like I intended to, but that's okay. I'm not too worried about that. Our main thing was actually to ride Tron. Now what we're gonna do is make our way back to the monorail so that we can take it over to Epcot. We wanna make sure we get a few hours in at Epcot because we checked the weather and apparently we're gonna have some bad weather coming in at about seven o'clock. So I wanna make sure that I have as much done before that time gets here because the last thing I want to do is get stuck in the park in bad rain. So let's head over to Epcot. All right, so we decided to take the express monorail because we can catch a connection to Epcot from there. So let's go. So we made it all the way over to Epcot. 
we were not able to get a boarding pass for the Guardians of the Galaxy virtual queue, unfortunately, but that's all good. The only thing is that the weather is not looking good. Um, it seems like this rain is going to be moving in a little quicker than we originally anticipated, so we may be leaving early. everybody as you can see I'm home I decided to finish out the video at home there wasn't really that much to film while we were still at Epcot we didn't stay very long we ended up not riding much of anything else and this kind of leads me into what I wanted to talk about which has a lot to do with the whole virtual queue boarding pass system that Disney has set up keep in mind the whole GD plus lightning lane virtual queue system is still fairly new to me because I've only been going back to Disney parks over the last couple of months. And um, the last time we were regular Disney goers was years ago, back in 2016, 2017. So this is pretty much new to me. I'm speaking from the perspective of a person who really enjoys rides, especially thrill rides. A lot of the newest attractions that Disney has opened in the past couple of years, including Tron, they use the virtual queue system. So basically you're gonna go into the Disney app, you at the time select it, which is usually at 7 a.m. or 1 p.m. You'll get in the virtual queue to obtain a boarding pass and that boarding pass allows you and whatever other party is in your group to go and ride the ride. The thing is the app selects the time that you ride the ride. Let's go back to the first time that I rode Tron. I got in line for the virtual queue and I did this at the seven o'clock virtual queue. I got my boarding pass. You really don't know the exact time that you'll be called because sometimes your boarding group may be moved up. And I'm guessing that it has a lot to do with how busy the park is and how many boarding passes have been issued for that time period. So not knowing the exact time that your boarding group will be called kind of puts a damper on the flow of the day. I felt like my day and my time was hijacked, so to speak, for lack of a better word, because my main thing was to ride Tron uh, last Friday. But because it took so long and we had no idea when our boarding group would be called, we just kind of had to find other things to do which is okay to a certain extent, but your time is being controlled by a process that you have no control of. How much fun can that be? It can become problematic for guests, especially for me. Like I said, I'm one that likes to ride rides. My typical day, if I'm not filming or obtaining content, B-roll and things like that, I'm going to ride rides. I like to get in as many rides as possible and then I may take a little break where I may want to do something else. Maybe check out a couple of shows, uh, maybe do a little shopping, grab a bite to eat. But the point is that I'm controlling the flow of my day. With the virtual queue, you're at the mercy of when your boarding group is called. So you're kind of constantly checking your phone to see, okay, how close are they now? I'm boarding group number 87. Right now they're on 23 through 55. Okay, so you go on about your day. The problem that I have is that when we got our boarding pass for Tron last Friday, it literally took an entire day for our boarding group to be called. That's crazy. Who wants to sit around from park open, which happened to be nine o'clock, all the way until 2.30, 2.45, before you can ride one of the most popular rides in the park? That's not cool. Now, here's another thing to consider. What we did was we park hopped and we went over to Epcot. The issue is that we technically couldn't leave Magic Kingdom until our boarding group was called, until after we rode Tron, then we were pretty much free to do what we wanted to do. Getting into Epcot had to be pushed back, all because we were waiting for this boarding group to be called. The other thing to keep in mind is that if you're park hopping and there are rides that you want to experience at another park, 
for us, we wanted to do Guardians of the Galaxy. Because of the system that Disney has in place for the one o'clock virtual queue, you must be in the park, present in the park in order to get into the virtual queue. So that could not work with us because we were stuck in Magic Kingdom waiting for our boarding group to be called for Tron, which meant that we could not park hop by one o'clock and get into Epcot at one o'clock to be there to get into the virtual queue for that ride because we had been called for Tron. You see where the conflict is? So adding a little more difficulty to the equation, consider you're a tourist and your time is even more limited than somebody like me who's a local. I can come back at any time. If you're traveling from out of town, you don't have that kind of flexibility. So that can become problematic. Not only did our time at Epcot get cut short, not just because of the bad weather that came in, but because we were not able to ride Guardians of the Galaxy and that didn't work. There are other rides to experience, but the issue with that was because of the crowd levels, the wait times were really, really high and it wasn't worth us staying in those long lines considering the bad weather coming in and it just didn't work out. So those are the major things that I have issues with. It's like you have to carefully pick and choose which parks you wanna to go to. You have to pick and choose which rides are most important to you and you kind of lose the fun of it. So it was pretty disappointing for us last Friday and that's part of the reason why I really couldn't finish the video in the park because I was a little frustrated with that whole situation. The fact that it took over five hours from the time that we obtained a boarding pass for Tron to actually get our group called and to get on Tron, I, it was just too much. With all that being said, I just wish that Disney would not rely so heavily on the virtual queue system. I mean, it does work to a certain extent, but to have the virtual queue system as the sole way of getting on a ride, and then the fact that you're only gonna ride, that that's one thing that I didn't mention. Once you get a virtual queue, that's it. You're not gonna ride that ride at all that day, unless you pay extra to ride the ride. And sometimes those lightning lanes can go upwards of $20, $15-$20. I mean, do I really want to pay an extra $15 or $20 to ride a ride when I should be able to just get in a standby and wait? I think we should be given that option. The only option to ride extra is if you pay for it. That doesn't sit well with me. When we go to Universal, we have the option. Okay, 60 minute standby time, you stand in line or you keep it moving. I'm fine with that, but give me the option. I don't think my only other option should be to pay an extra $20 to ride Hagrid's or pay an extra $20 to ride Velocicoaster. No, if people wanna stand in line, let them stand in line. I have no issues with that. But yeah, in a nutshell, to me, the virtual queue system is extremely limiting. If you're using the virtual queue, you're only gonna ride the ride once and that's it. It's either gonna be at the 7 a.m. virtual queue or at the one o'clock and that's if you are in the park at one o'clock to obtain a boarding pass for the one o'clock virtual queue because right now the rules stand that you have to be in the park in order to obtain the boarding pass for the one o'clock virtual queue. It's been stated that things are going to change in 2024 um, in regards to how the virtual queue system, Genie Plus works. So I don't know, maybe these issues will be addressed, maybe not. Hopefully this information helps you understand how things work, helps you understand what you could experience on your upcoming trip, especially if you're coming from out of town. And keep in mind, I'm speaking as a local because I live here. Um, it's different for me because I can always come back another day. That's not the case for people that are traveling out of town and maybe this is a once a year or a once in a lifetime trip. You wanna keep those things in mind uh, when you're coming to Disney parks, especially when you want to experience those really popular newer rides like Tron and Guardians of the Galaxy. I guess that's about it. Hopefully this information was helpful to you. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure you give it a thumbs up. Also, 
comment, leave a comment below if you have any insight or if you have any opinions on the whole virtual queue system. I'd love to hear your opinion, your experience, uh, your personal experience with it. Um, let's talk about it. Also consider subscribing, share, also click the bell notification so that you never miss a future video upload. So until next video, see ya. Thank you.